What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I am Necrotic Nick, and I have an album review for you. So a release that caught my eye that's coming out on the 10th of April was Caustic Wounds' debut album, Death Posture. This comes out on Profound Lore Records, and this is, again, the debut album. They have one other demo, I believe it's only on cassette. And this band is from the Pacific Coast scene in terms of death metal, or rather in this case, death grind. They're from Seattle, Washington, and they feature members of Cerebral Rot, Mortiferum, and Fetid. So a lot of the up-and-coming bands in that area are doing a grindcore slash death grind project together. Now it opens up with the title track with a little bit of sort of squealing and some ambience, and then boom, you're into really sludgy grindcore slash death grind. Really instantly reminded me a lot of early grindcore, especially like early Carcass, early Bolt Thrower, namely the first album, and maybe even some Napalm Death and Extreme Noise Terror too. It has a very raw production, and that's kind of the thing that's very similar in terms of the whole Pacific Coast thing is the production is very similar to what you would hear on Fetid's album or Cerebral Rots. It's very murky and sludgy, and when it comes down to the death metal aspects on here, it borders on Death Doom. And you get to these groovier pockets that come up. So overall, you're kind of left with an effect that this is like a band like Two Mold covering a band like Terrorizer. Now, to me, that sounds like an awesome combo. I really like the fact that this is sort of a different kind of death grind than I've heard in a while, unless I go back further and listen to older stuff. Now, one thing I was really surprised with on this entire album are lots of groovy pockets. I love to go and do breakdowns and good chuggy parts that are very reminiscent of the bands they're in. Though I think the only thing that really kind of unifies that whole sound is the fact that it's very sludgy production, much like any of those releases from Cerebral Rot and Fetid and so on. Vocally, it stays pretty much in a low growl, but it's also punctuated with higher screams. The higher screams really remind me a lot of Mitch Harris when he does his high screams in Napalm Death. But you also throw in some heavy Morbid Angel tremolo strumming and just big sludgy breakdowns too. So again, this is a kind of death run I really haven't heard in a while. Now as far as those songs go, they're generally around like two minute mark, minute and a half. Sometimes you get ones that are just around a minute. One of the songs that stood out to me was Terror Bomber. It's probably one of the shortest tracks on here, but what they do in the short amount of time is really cool. It opens up very fast, very much in the realm of grindcore, but it slows down to the point towards the end, which, you know, again, this is only about a minute track towards like a Death Doomish breakdown with some really cool angular riffing. It kind of reminded me of Demolich a bit, which is strange to bring up in grindcore, but I like how they use those kind of angular riffs like that. They really just still sound a lot like Death Doom or the old school death metal that pretty much is going on right now. Now around Ritual Trappings and Uranium Decay, this album really takes kind of a hard turn more towards death metal. It's still very fast, the songs are still very short, but it has a more death metal feel and again the groovy pockets really come out and man does this album deliver some killer riffs. Very memorable, very reminiscent of old school death metal across the board. Like all of a sudden they just kind of squeeze in some autopsy-like moments and then boom right into like frantic blasting. Uranium Decay especially has an amazing opening riff to it that kind of sets the pace before going into the grindcore sections. But I love the fact that this opening riff kind of just stands out on its own. They go into the whole mid part where it's very much the realm of death grind and then they bring back that opening riff to really close it out and just let this riff really sink in. Sprinkle in a couple of squealy solos in there because most of the solos on here aren't very pretty. They're just as ugly as grindcore should be. But I like the fact that they're in there and that kind of gives it that little bit more death grind feel because you know, solos really aren't a huge part of like actual grindcore. But with death grind you get just little ones here and there. Cabal was another one that stood out to me. I really like how the fade-in intro was like pretty much with the band warming up and just making a racket before saying, you know, we're who the fuck ever, in this case, Caustic Wound, and then going right to a set. This has a cool breakdown riff that's played over the blast, just like a simple chug. It really reminded me a lot of uh, stuff that I heard on Two Mold's last album. And there's some cool punk nods in this. And that's really something that I didn't hear a lot on this album, which made me think this is more of a death grind album. It doesn't favor the punk influence as much as Grindcore actually does, but they do sprinkle it in there, like some D-beat sections, some nice little, you know, moshers, but overall it pretty much stays in the death metal realm when it comes down to the groovier moments or spots where there's just kind of a fast, thrashy beat. And a cool thing that also shows up in here is a fair amount of atmosphere. 
you know, you pretty much get all the kind of cavernous atmosphere you get in you know, Mora Ferrum's releases and stuff like Witch Vomit, but condensed in grindcore. So, like, in between songs, occasionally you'll get, like, some interesting feedback. The howls have a lot of reverb on them, so they sound extra cavernous. And that murky production just kind of makes the sound dirty. And I think that's just how grindcore should sound. Now, towards the end of the album, it kind of goes back to more of the grindcore roots. Invisible Cell and Guillotine are much faster, much more just aggressive and in-your-face. There's fewer breakdowns. But an issue I had was, in between these songs, there isn't much of a break. And maybe, like, a little bit of ambience feedback or a weird movie quote or something might have separated these songs a little bit more. Now, the closing track, Cataclysmic Gigaton, was pretty interesting. This one, again, kind of shifts a little bit more towards death metal. There's some really cool tremolo picking, but a really cool lead melody on top of it to kind of give it a little bit of extra atmosphere. Now, this is the longest track at 3 minutes and 40 seconds, roughly. And a good chunk of it towards the end is spent with a lot of distance and squealing guitars, pretty much like, you know, the outro of Rain and Blood. But it kind of worked as the closer because this album is all about grit and just aggression. And overall, I mean, I really just enjoyed listening to this. The drum work on here is fantastic. It definitely reminds me a lot of Pete Sandoval. Lots of insane blasting, but really cool groovy pockets in there and... The overall feel of the album is just dirty, and I kind of just like that. I like the fact that this was kind of a throwback to older grind or older death grind. Like, the nods to bands like Repulsion are in there, too. And it's a very straight-ahead attack. It really doesn't deviate from its mission of just delivering fast, nasty grindcore. So overall, I'm going to give this four stars. This is a killer release. I pretty much expected this to be awesome considering all the members and the bands that are in there, but I was legit surprised at how good this was. I hadn't really heard anything from Pacific Coast really take on anything like remotely close to grindcore. Mostly it's been old school death metal and death doom, and the bands that have come out of the scene have been exceptional. This is a little bit different, but they still incorporated bits of that sound from their bands in there. You still get the murky production, you still get the nasty kind of dark atmosphere to it but you get this sort of punky thrashy edge to it and you get some outright aggression that comes through i really enjoyed this release i strongly recommend this for any fans of grind out there this is definitely something i'm going to be jamming a lot i ordered it it should be arriving here hopefully by the end of the month so i'm looking forward to that so if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel subscribe because we do shit like this all the time stay safe out there guys